What's up everybody, Evan here, and today is a very special day. Today marks the first episode of this brand new series called Why You Need A, or Winna for short. Here, we'll be discussing various pieces of gear that you always hear folks saying, oh, dude, you totally gotta have a, and dive into a little history behind the piece of gear and show you why you need it. And on today's inaugural episode, we'll be discussing why you need a Fender Telecaster. But before we go any further, if you don't wanna miss out on any of this guitar gear nerdage, hit that subscribe button and follow me on my social so you can stay up to date on new videos and announcements. Now with that all out of the way, let's get into it. The Telecaster was first introduced in 1950, but not as the Telecaster, but under the name Broadcaster. One quick cease and desist from Gretsch quickly made Fender halt the use of that name. Never one to waste a cent, Leo Fender decided rather than wasting money on new decals for the guitar, they would simply clip the word broadcaster off the decal. This niche era in the Telly's life is referred to as the no-caster era, as the headstock decal simply read Fender due to the clipping. One awkward nameless year later, and we finally have our first official Telecaster off the line. But besides the addition to the decal, not a whole lot is different between a broadcaster, a no-caster, and a Telecaster which is why you often see some debate on the Telly's birth year ranging from 1950 to 1952, with most people citing 52 as the Telly's birth year due to the decal, iconic transparent butterscotch finish, maple fretboard, and the black pickguard that is so synonymous with the Telecaster aesthetic. But regardless of where you stand on the birth year of the Telly, the core model has remained largely unchanged since its birth, making it one of the most recognizable guitars on the planet, both visually and sonically. All of today's examples will be using my 1989 Made in Japan Fender Telecaster, loaded with a set of Mojo Tones Broadcaster Quiet Coil pickups. It's an alder body, maple fretboard, and a pretty overall typical Tele spec. The Broadcast pickups have a true authentic Tele sound, with the bridge being a little bit on the hot side, but pretty much in that 1950-52 era sound. First, let's start off with the neck position. There seems to be a lot of hate towards the neck pickup on a Tele, often being cited as being too dark, muddy, and generally uninspiring. But I would bet that most of those people never actually picked up and played a proper Telecaster, and they were probably playing a bad T-style guitar. With the tone knob rolled up to 10, a Tele neck pickup should sound strikingly similar to a Strat, which makes sense as a Tele neck pickup is simply a single coil with a cover, which could explain why it's a bit hit or miss with people. See, when you add a cover to a pickup, it's not just changing the aesthetics, it's actually changing the magnetic field of the pickup, commonly reducing a little ultra high end of the microphonic range. That's why you'll commonly hear people say Strat pickups are a little bit raunchier and kind of gnarlier compared to a Tele pickup, and that's probably due to them being slightly more microphonic. But you can easily make up for that with a little extra grit or presence in your signal. Overall, the Tele's neck pickup can kind of BS its way in that classic Strat sound with the tone all the way up, and almost sound like a humbucker when you roll the tone down and kind of fatten and warm it up. It can also take gain and fuzz like a champ, and in this example, everything we'll be using, the neck pickup. flip it back to the bridge. The bridge pickup on a Tele is very unique compared to other single coils, as they have a metal base plate that the pickup is mounted on top of. As we discussed with how much the cover impacts the tone of the neck, so does the additional metal on the base plate. The extra metal beefs up the pickup's output, and depending on what metal is used, it can also affect the overall EQ of the guitar. Playing the bridge clean with some Thick compression yields that country chicken picking tone that we all love. 
or add in a little light overdrive for some clear yet gnarly rock and roll Americana goodness. Saturate it even more and you have a singing vocal-like lead tone that stays articulate and avoids farting out on the lower notes. The Esquire, aka the Telly Sands neck pickup brother, is a favorite among fusion guitarists like Alan Hines for this very attribute. Now, I'm not much of a chicken picker, so here's a dirty Americana track that highlights the mid-game tones on the rhythm tracks and a saturated tone for the lead. Finally, let's get cleaned up after all that filth with the legendary middle position for all your funk, soul, and R&B needs. The amount of records cut using this tried and true method is almost too staggering to list. Pull up any Rhino records, Stack records, or any track made in Minneapolis, and it was probably cut on a telly using the middle position. This setting gives you the best of both worlds on the telly's two pickups. You get the bite and articulation from the bridge and the warmth and creaminess from the neck. And being that they are typically wired in parallel in this position, you also get a bit of natural low-end flub being canceled out and an ever so slight volume drop, making it perfect for fast-moving funk rhythm lines and tight voicings. But it also handles gain like a champ as well. Being that you get a lot of low-end cancellation, it's the perfect setting if you're using a fuzz or if you have an issue being heard in a dense mix. In this example, you guessed it, all the parts were recorded using the middle position on my telly. And if you're still not convinced that you need a telly, here's a track that is using all three positions to truly show just how much ground this axe can cover. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the first installment of Winna. If you made it here, why not hit that like button and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next episode. Also, leave a comment below on which model you're starting to look into, or put a brief description on what features and what general vibe you're looking for in a Telecaster, and I'll respond back with some recommendations. Until next time, cheers. place in my teleprompter I cannot see because I am blind <laughs>